We're just taking this thing one race at a time this year. We were all over the place. You right! Jesus! Now I'm getting nervous. This is it! This is it! No, it's not! No, it's not! Targa Newfoundland is a grueling five-day, 2,200-kilometer road race through the towns and countryside of Newfoundland. What does it take to survive, let alone win, the only race of its kind in North America? This grueling test of body, mind, and machine, the Targa Newfoundland. To find out, we will have to go back to the beginning. <laughs> Nearly 50 cars will be on the starting line. But not all of them will make it to the final day to cross the finish line. Among them will be the three cars of the Hume team. Well, last year, I wasn't sure if I was going to come back. I was very depressed. I expected to do better. You know, we were extremely handicapped, so it was a downer. I realized afterwards we had unfinished business because we didn't really finish the race. Where am I going? Oh, we missed it. We missed it all together. So I decided that this year we'll come back and do it in style and, and race to win because we knew we could win. But not when they got white. All righty, guys. Uh, some, oh, somehow, uh, Target Newfoundland gets in your blood, it gets under your skin. Um, it's an event that I now personally look forward to every single year. I'm here, I'm ready. Let's do this thing, you know? I thought for sure. It's, it's almost a done deal. It's first place. I would accept nothing less, actually. And there, it's quick. It's really quick. It's really quick. So I want to run into this. Right. See, I came back because right there, right? Briar wanted to go. I wasn't going to come back, but um, meaning I wouldn't have necessarily taken, you know, on myself to do it again unless Briar was going to do it. And John suggested that we do it as a couple. All of us in all three cars had, except for one person, had four years experience, three years coming into it. So no reason to believe he wouldn't do really well. The first day of racing will take them through the high-speed courses of the John Curran Memorial, Marysvale, Southern Harbor, Northwest Brook, and Gooseberry Cove. The cars and drivers ready themselves for the start of the first race. Just after the first car leaves the start line, there's a problem on course. A minor course change is required. Not what the drivers need right now. Hume Sr. takes it in stride. His car is the first of the team's cars to enter the stage. Inside Hume Jr.'s car, there are signs of first day jitters. Fucking clocks, Mel. So it should be 16, right? Okay. Surprisingly, Riddell and the rookie DeLang seem yeah, calm go. before the start of their race. We're on the clock. Four, three, two, one, go. Oh, challenge John's skills today because he did the last leg all by gut feel. Uh, Craig and myself, we lost our um, both of our clocks on the longest race of the week on day one. They both cut out so we didn't know at what time we were supposed to be in the race at any time so I had to guess using my best judgment throughout the whole race. We feel good about our day although it wasn't yeah. perfect. It was as close to perfect as you can get with the equipment that you have to use. Yeah. We done good. <laughs> Stage five. Has problems. We came in there so early. Uh, we knew something was wrong. Okay, 20, 20, 20 19, Shit. 18, 17, 16, 15, oh my God, 14, you're kidding me. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, yeah, we're over. 7, Bad. We were so, so early. Uh, we were penalized 15 seconds. Yeah. Uh, we I'll weren't the that. only ones, apparently. Uh, I think that um, 
all the GT class had issue with with that stage for some reason. Excellent. That was great. Really good. Um, actually got zero penalty points, which was a surprise for our first time out yeah. when things counted. There's still one leg that we think is going to be contested because it was very strange. We found it strange too. So anything could still happen. We Day one also saw its share of carnage, as several cars failed to finish the day. We were just coming into it too fast, and we just didn't have time to negotiate the turn. The target class, I think, lost four cars on that run. Yeah, four cars crashed or were damaged. There's one here behind us. Well, it was damaged. But the race itself could be in jeopardy. Tuesday night we had this huge drivers meeting because they were all afraid of the weather. That this weather is going to be terrible and be prepared, we might have to do this, that and the other things. The center of the storm, which is at this point a category one hurricane, it could be that when it hits here or it could be a large tropical storm. And I didn't know what to expect. I just figured, okay, well we'll run when it's wet, if they'll let us run and mm -hmm. and that's all there is to it. I, I like the wet. I'd rather race in the wet in a cloud than I would in the sun. I think Targa must mean storm somewhere. We always thought it meant plate or black. The teams will have to wait until morning before they know the true impact the storm will have. At the end of the first full day of racing, the Hume team sits on top of the leaderboard with the mini countrymen of Riddell and DeLang penalty free in first place, followed closely by the professional driving team of Hopkins and Hughes in their Fiat Abarth. The BMW 335 IS of Hume Sr. and McMullen lands in third spot, with Hume Jr. and Van Adrichem in fourth in their BMW M3. On the second day of racing, Hurricane Leslie comes crashing ashore. Will the drivers be able to make the change from dry to wet driving conditions? Will they be able to keep their cars on the rain-slicked roads? The cars head out into the storm. The drivers will have to battle the elements through eight challenging stages as Hurricane Leslie lashes the Exploits Valley area. Stages include Appleton, Bobby's Cove, Pleasant View, Point Lemmington, Glover's Harbour, and the always popular two runs through Gander. Trying to take it easy in the rain, trying to stay dry and keep four wheels on the road. The weather's terrible, but the racing's awesome. Hume and McMullen lead the pack onto the stage. It doesn't really have the condition out. No, what do you think? <laughs> condition three. Hume Jr. and Van Adrichem check the conditions before they too head out. One, green. The roads are not the only thing affected by the wet conditions. The Mini lost its odometer on day two in the rain. The water saturated the uh, sensor, so John and Briar were driving not knowing um, where they were. I looked down and noticed that the uh, odometer machine was shut down completely. We had no odometer reading. We turned it back on. It was just doing crazy numbers. And uh, so we did the rest of the day without the odometer. You're supposed to be worried about the water and maybe yeah. the traction and yeah. visibility and what have you. <laughs> we had something we else to worry about. That was, it became, it, it, it didn't play because we were trying to figure out how to, how to go through the rest of the day without necessarily having the information we had before. Oh. What? I can't read that. Shit. Oh. All right, sorry. Oh. That's trouble. Okay. okay, you're so, going to have to call the Okay, no, I was driving by sight and by by looking at the Odo, and Briar was marking the distances and giving me times. Despite the conditions, all eight stages are completed by the team. Will the team be able to overcome their technical difficulties? Only time will tell. No, sometimes it would turn, it was, it, I was getting nothing. Sometimes I got 200 and some odd, do you know what I mean? 
We're just about to have a look at that right now to see if we can resolve the issue and get them back up tomorrow because today it wouldn't have been fun for them at all, I have to say. So, you know what I would have done? I would have, I would have jacked up the back side. Get my rubber band right here then. Today was a very, very good day for us. Um, my personal best day of the three years I've been doing this. Um, I, it rained, so we had a lot of fun. We zeroed all our stages. Five, four, three, two, and one right now. Perfect. Good job. That was good. That's We did well rain. in the rain. We had that we one spin well. out, but we recovered very quickly. And uh, no, I didn't. I didn't recover for about eight kilometers. Two, thirty-three. Turn again. Well, that could have been bad. So tomorrow we'll really start to separate the crowd, and they'll start to spread out. So we're getting down to some very precise driving coming up tomorrow. At the end of day two, and after some scoring corrections by the officials. Hume Jr. and Van Adrichem find themselves at the top of the leaderboard in their BMW M3. But watch out, Riddell and the rookie DeLang are just one point behind in the Mini Countryman. Hopkins and Hughes' Fiat Abarth has slipped to third, but still within striking distance. Hume Sr. and McMullen remain tied in third in their BMW 335iS. Day 3 will see another eight stages of competitive racing, starting in Gander and finishing in the town of Clarenville. This is considered by many to be one of the toughest days in the Targa Newfoundland. The officials clear the course before the start of the race. The Vivid race team has entered a pair of cars, not for racing, but to film a movie using the Targa Newfoundland as a backdrop. The cars enter the stage in the order they finished the previous day. The favorites, Hume Jr. and Van Adrichem, are first on course. Nope. Alright, 450 meters onto wet bridge, wooden. I think I'm up to speed, okay? Alright, I will tell you, 45 needs to be at 90. 3, 2, and 1. Yeah, right on time. Thank you. Alright, um, hard right at Y. Next up, the closest challengers, Hopkins and Hughes, Fiat Abarth. Adrian Hughes and Roy Hopkins, who have raced all but one of these races and won more than once, um, racing against us directly, that was a big challenge and we felt that they would be the ones to beat. Three, two, one, go. Hume and McMullen charge onto the stage, knowing that they will have to drive perfectly if they want to overcome Hopkins and Hughes in the standings. Riddell and DeLang have some catching up to do in their Mini Countryman. Will their technical difficulties put an end to their pursuit of victory? Rough start today, but I think we gave the fans a show the last exit flying finish. We were all over the place. Did you yeah. do that on purpose? No, we hit loose gravel coming out of the turn. You didn't do that on purpose? No, 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 no. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. How'd we do? <laughs> perfect, I eh? don't know, I was watching it the It was road. perfect. Well, we thought we had our roto. We had our roto for Port Blanford. It worked great, and then it just died again, so we're without an auto, without a computer again. Technical difficulties are causing confusion for Riddell and DeLang. It's not possible. My medium, medium right into line jump hill. Three, two, one. Oh. It couldn't have been 11 seconds behind, or I wouldn't have been there where I was.
The racing continues. Fatigue begins to be a factor. Uh, it's been up and down. <laughs> Sunny day, much better than yesterday. The day ends with a race through the streets of Clarenville. Even before the engines have cooled, the cars are ready for tonight's car show. Fans in Clarenville flock to meet the drivers and see the cars up close. Almost all the cars will need some kind of maintenance tonight. Uh, we're just changing the brake fluid. Every night after you get the brakes really hot, you just want to check, change it to make sure there's no moisture in it. Everything's good, yeah. Small exhaust leak, but we'll get her. <laughs> For some teams, it will be a long night. Uh, basically, in a stage uh, with uh, some sand on the tarmac surface. And when we hit that sand, the car started to slid a little bit. Uh, we touch a telephone pole and it flipped over. So the guys are working very hard to put it back together for tomorrow. We will be there, I think. And we uh, aced Clarenville no penalty points at all. So we're really happy with the Wednesday results. Five, so four, three, two, one, zero. Couldn't see a damn thing. I know, but we hit it right. <laughs> we hit it Whoa. right. Whoa, that sun was not in a good place. No, but we hit it right. I'm exhausted. I'm excited. We're done. We did the best I think we could. Yeah, we ran, ran our best. And today. I think we ran pretty good. And we're in second place at the end of the day, so yeah. how could you be happier than that? Anyway, uh, the rest of our team is doing very well, which is good. I think the end of the day in zero. Um, I think we collected six or seven points. So that hopefully will continue tomorrow. I need you to be, no, I need you to be there in six. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not Finish on. Ahead. All right, uh, count down is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, one. I couldn't see a fucking thing. Where? At the finish. I couldn't see shit. I couldn't see the signs. I couldn't see anything. When yeah. we were on a transfer, so. I suddenly looked down and noticed that the odometer was actually working again. So uh, for a very difficult run, we were able to use it and thought things had dried out. That, that, that particular stage was so fast with so many crests, ups and downs that if I still had to watch the odometer myself, but the one for the car, those little numbers, uh, I wouldn't have been able. We wouldn't have been able to do it because I wouldn't be able to watch the road. So it was very good that we that we got it tonight. We didn't get any uh, penalty points today. After a nearly perfect day of driving, Riddell and Delang snatched the lead from Hume Jr. and Van Edrichem, who slipped all the way to third place. Hume and McMullen finished the sweep of the top three spots for the Hume team by ending the day in second place, only three points off the leaders. Day four sends the drivers down the Burn Peninsula with eight stages of competitive racing. Stages include the tight and challenging streets of Frenchman's Cove and one of the most popular stops, Marystown. You know, six points in our division is, is miles of difference. Um, it was theirs to lose and you know, Craig and I were just doing everything we could to maintain our, our status. Well, by the time Thursday came around, I, I knew that we were done. It was, it was like deja vu because the same thing happened the year before.
all the teams are feeling the pressure. A driving mistake could see them tumble off the leaderboard, but mechanical trouble has some teams sidelined. You now we hit the bridge and we popped a, a linkage somewhere on the clutch. We had no clutch, and then when we pulled over here, I think we pinched the fuel line. Garnish was just as hard as ever to drive. I still like Garnish. I, only because it's the toughest one, it's the hardest one for me, because it, it has everything. Go. going out on on garnish and we made a we made a I made a terrible mistake in Frenchman's Cove. No. A communications error sees Riddell and Delang miss a turn. A serious problem if they can't make up the time. Square right. Square right. I didn't see any ITCs. I don't know what I saw. I, I saw nothing. I didn't see anything. It was all a blur. I did. I saw it. It's the first tape I ever ran. I never run a tape before like that. The crowd loved it. Did they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we focused. We ran each race like it was the first race of the week. And when we did make mistakes, because we missed a turn or two, uh, we just mitigated the damage as much as we could and minimized the penalty points. And just bared with it. First time through, I uh, missed the hairpin turn, sort of, and almost ran through a fence. Yeah, and pick up your speed and go for it now. Put your speed back. And, you know, things happen, and that happened. Uh-oh. We, we missed the road. We did? Yes, we did. Shit. Missed the road. Completely off track, Human McMullen seem to have lost any hope of winning this year's race. They will also have to hope that they can make up time on this challenging course. But first, they will have to try and stay ahead of Hume Jr. and Van Adrikum's BMW. Hold it, hold it, hold it. We're fast, John Three Norris. Drive through as fast as you can. Yeah. Left. race for Thursday. This is the race last year that I uh, missed the first turn. Three, two, one, give her. You know, it's never over till it's over. Right here. This yep, one. this is it. This is it. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Go for it. <laughs> I figured John and Briar were going to win this race. I was going to be happy for another second place plate. We had taken some really huge hits on Thursday afternoon, probably our second race in, our second race to finish, because she got lost in the book. Ask her why we're sitting so far apart after day four. <laughs> the tension between driver and co-driver has reached a boiling point. I don't know, I told her not to sit over there. It was fun today, actually. I had a really good day driving today. Today was a fun day. Not when there's tension so thick in the car that you could cut it with a knife. It's brutal. Uh, we collected only 10 seconds. It could have been a lot more. Oh, I think we learned something today. I hope. That's it. As we can tell, we're finishing the day just like we started with the team first, second, and third. Yeah, which is the way it should be.
Despite the day's challenges, Team Hume sits alone on top of the leaderboard, occupying all three spots. Riddell and DeLang and their mini countrymen hang on to the top spot. With one more day of racing, will they be able to finish ahead of the pack? Day five, the final day of racing, takes the cars back up the rugged Burn Peninsula with the final race on the beautiful streets of Brigus. As every day passed by, the torture grew stronger and stronger in my car. Again, communication wasn't there. It was, it was never there right from day one. By Friday, it was torture. I, I, I didn't even want to run anymore. At least in day one, we were talking. By day four, which would be Thursday, there wasn't a lot of talking. By day five, Friday, I didn't even want to race. I was having, I was having no fun in the car. The air is filled with tension in the BMW of Hume Jr. and Van Adrichem. After nearly a week of racing, both driver and co-driver are tired and unhappy with each other's performance. Favorites going into the race five days earlier, they now have to hope that they can hold it together long enough just to finish the race. By, by, the, by the time we made our big, huge mistake on Friday afternoon, I said, well, the pressure is off. Now you have care slight right into turn acute right into junction slight across. Uh, I'm through all of it right now. Okay. So I need 53. Whoa, 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 whoa. 353. Why? Four. I need, I need 411 here. We could be slow, I'm telling you. The clock is high. It's fucking slow then, Mel. Who cares about that? Give me some instructions. Okay, you have to go faster. I need to know where to turn. All right, um, uh, this is all taken out. The, this was our instructions that were taken out. Oh, turn a medium left downhill? Yep. Is this the turn a medium left yes. downhill? Go. Well, there we go. There's the one that killed us, eh? Go. I heard the fucking thing beeping. Excellent. I knew I was going slow. Let's just go and have some fun. Who cares what we race? But in the back of my mind, this little thing still told me, don't do that. Your competitive side, don't do that. You can still somehow, something can come out of this. Brigus, the final race. All the remaining cars make their final run through these scenic streets. <laughs> Two runs. The last, it was the same course, but Both it was Brigus. two runs. Yeah. Cue right. Cue right. Cue right. I was still, I was still driving by sight. Cue right. Jesus. Fuck. Christ. Cue right. Fucking Christ. Okay. Relax. 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 I don't know where. I'm just too tired. I guess. I'm yeah. Fucked up. You're too tired. Twice, same place. Now you're Absolutely it. just losing my brain. I'm not listening to her. I'm not and I know the bridge is there. I mean I've done the run did the run before. So and I did it twice. I did That's two, what happens after twenty three years. Two times marriage. two he times in to a me row. Anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> and the cars that have the fewest penalty points after each race are the ones that win. The ones that run it most perfectly. One. Go. Okay, left, 0 0.03, made three seconds. Got 79, it. I need 55, I got 55. Okay, cross the bridge <laughs> at 102. At 102, so I'm going to go right at the barricades at 102. Got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at 102, I need 111, and I had it. Three, two, one, zero. Well, Craig, I did another it. end of another great year. Another great year, Best the greatest year yet. Greatest year yet. So we left the last race and just drove right to Marystown. We can go to Marystown right now. We're halfway there. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. 
Michael, our videographer, uh, one of our two videographers, had a kidney stone attack Friday morning, early, so he had to rush off to the hospital in Marystown. Hello? Hi there. So, who's driving down in Marystown? You and... Me and Craig. Who oh, else is... Up for it? Who else is calling you gorgeous? we're up for it. You are up for it. Okay. We just need to know where the hell he is. He so, is at the Buren Clinic which is about 15 minutes south of Marystown. Okay, as long as he stays put there till we get there, all right? Okay. Hello. See, we're already uh, halfway up to the turn off to Marystown, so we're Hello. from where oh, we came awesome. out. Okay. So that saves and, a lot of time. When we got to Marystown, Craig had his phone service back on, and he looked at his phone, and Briar had sent him a congratulatory note saying, you won the race. And so we're looking at each other going, what? <laughs> Here is Michael Engel in Buren. Three hours away, three and a half hours away from St. John's. What, where's your buddies when you need them, eh? I'm not sure what message I just received here. <clears throat> How do you interpret that? You won, congratulations. Right. Just say, Friar, what was the, who finished where? We don't know how we finished. We just finished the last race and came here. <laughs> we didn't think we'd won the race. So we found out there, and we had a great drive back in the fog going fast, got back at one o'clock in the morning, but you know, we felt great. <laughs> I got a little addicted. <laughs> oh my God, we made the podium. I can't believe we somehow, with all of our errors and bad communication and crap that went on during the week, we managed to make the podium. Yeah, no. but the uh, the pace of it, and as I said, the adrenaline and, and the people that you meet along the way and the scenery, it was, it was mm -hmm. pretty fun. I learned one thing this year. First is the best. Second sucks because nobody ever remembers second. You're only so close to coming in first. And third, oh my God, that's fantastic because you happen to make the podium. So, so you know what? First or third is the way to go, I guess. <laughs> you know, winning is just icing on the cake. So, you know, you've been there, you've done it. Yes, but I like to keep doing it. So the final standings are Hume Sr. and McMullen come out in first with Riddell and DeLang finishing a disappointing but still outstanding second. Hume Jr. and Van Adrichem are able to hold on to their third spot, making it a clean sweep of first, second and third for the Hume team. To win the Targa Newfoundland, it took courage, endurance, skill, but above all else, heart. <laughs>